Funny, isn't it, Runt? <laughs> it sure is. What is? Here we are again, riding with Inspector Faraday and his almost human bloodhound, Sergeant Matthews. <laughs> Doing it so often makes it boring, eh, Blackie? No, on the contrary, I rather enjoy it. <laughs> Why they don't use you in the Bureau of Psychology instead of the homicide detail is one of the mysteries of the police department. Maybe it's because there are certain people I can always lay my hands on without overtaxing my brain. Oh, touche, Inspector. <laughs> touche? What does that mean? <laughs> it means we're nearing home. Oh, sure. You're a lifesaver, Inspector. We'd still be standing on that curb if you hadn't come along. Next time you escort a lady in distress to her home, be sure you pick one that lives near a taxi stand. <laughs> well, it's the Sir Galahad in me, I guess. <laughs> At least Galahad had a horse. I know him. Timothy old Galahad. He was a man of Captain Fatbush. You know, take my advice, Blackie. Ladies are not your specialty. Keep away from them, particularly when they're in trouble. Thanks for your advice and the lift. Come on, Rudd. Look. Oh, now, wait a minute, Blackie. They didn't mean drinking. They're all right. The girl's putting up too good a fight to be drunk. Blackie, look. Remember what the inspector told you about women? I can't change the habits of a lifetime, even for the inspector. Come on, Rudd. Guys. Yeah. Hey, look. Zeke Field Follies, remember? Jerry Payton. Yeah, you were kind of stuck on her a couple of years ago. <laughs> I sure was. I wonder what they were trying to pull. I don't know. They tailed so fast, I didn't even get a good look at them. Come on, let's get her in the house. Come here, Rob. Get some brandy, Rob. All right. Jerry Payton. Can you imagine her fainting right in front of your doorstep? Say, isn't she married to that rich kid who was sent up the river on a manslaughter rap? Yes, that's right. Oh, remember? Drunk driving. Turned over a car, killed a dame or something. Uh, yeah. Huh. No wonder you were soft on her. You tried to stop the wedding, too. For her own good, yes. Blackie! Oh! What happened? When you fell and hit your head, you'll be all right, Jerry. Take a sip of that. That's right. Some friends of yours tried to force you into a car. Friends? I didn't have any... Oh, now I remember. Who were they? I don't know. They didn't wait long enough to be introduced. Oh, Feel this better? is terrible. I don't know what to do. one of your ideas? Oh, wait a minute, Blackie. If this was one of my ideas, you think it'd be that good looking? How did it get here? This does look like the steps of a cathedral. I'm sorry, Blackie. It's mine. What? I came up here because I needed someone to help. And you were the only one I could think of. On the way up, I realized I was being followed. Luckily, the door was open, so I locked the baby in and went downstairs to wait for you. Well, sit down. Now, who was following you? I don't know, but I'm sure it's got something to do with my husband. Well, isn't he doing a stretch? The paper said he was paroled yesterday. Oh. I know he'll make straight for me. I didn't visit him once while he was away. I wanted to forget him. Oh, Blackie, I should have listened to you. I should never have married him. I know, but you did. Now, what about the baby? I didn't tell him when the baby came. I didn't even let his family know. Oh, John treated me so horribly. He stayed away for days at a time. Even blamed me when his father disinherited him. I didn't even want him to know the child was his. Well, perhaps when he finds out he's a father, he... Nothing will change, John. He'll kill me, I tell you, and the baby, too. Mm, that's nice going on. You've had plenty of time to divorce him, Jerry. But, Blackie, it wasn't so easy. I had to work nights to support the baby, and I had to sleep in the daytime. That's why I've come to you. Oh, I knew I had no right to, after the way I let you down. You really did, you know. And you hurt him, too. Skip it, Ron. Well, there's only one thing to do. What's that? Police headquarters, please. Oh, no, Blackie, please, not the police. But your husband's the next con, and he's threatening me. I know, but then everybody will know I have the baby, and John's people will try to take him away from me. Hello. Hello, police headquarters, Inspector Faraday's office. Oh, no, Blackie, please. Faraday talking. Hello, Faraday. This is Boston Blackie. Put that phone down. John. Blackie. Hang it up, I said. What about it, Blackie? 
Mr. Screwy. He hung up. A beautiful family portrait. My wife and I let it ring. Please, John, let me explain. I can see what happened. They bury me in prison for two years, and you ride on the merry-go-round with a guy who didn't want you to marry me. But you're proving right now that my advice was right. Doesn't make any difference. Nobody's gonna leave here. What about your baby? My baby? That's a laugh. Don't, Blackie. He isn't worth it. Well, where do we go from here? Wouldn't be any fun going alone. I might take you all with me. Even the kid. A lot can happen in two years, Blackie. I've been thinking a lot about you. you a return ticket to where you came from. Get police headquarters before. Smart guy. Hello, operator. Get in police headquarters. Hurry, I'm an emergency. What happened? I thought I heard a shot. Uh, well, uh, you know, it, it, it could have been the backfire downstairs. Remember those yes. cars and... Blackie! Blackie! Now, wait a minute, Jerry. I didn't do this. Somebody fired through the door. Well, it could have been one of those guys who tried to put you in a car downstairs, remember? Oh, with all this scandal, what'll I do? My baby will never let me keep him now. Don't worry. Blackie, Faraday, he's coming up. Uh-oh, we've got to work fast. You've got to get out of here, Jerry. Use the servant's entrance. Well, but my baby... Well, I'll bring him to you later. He's a wonderful mother. I can't leave now, him. Now, don't be a fool. The reporters will be here in an hour. You told me you didn't want the patents to find out you had a baby. Now go on, hurry up. <laughs> Take the baby to the servant's room at the end of the hall and shut the door. Oh, but Blackie, what about all the babies? Suppose he starts to yell or something. Stand on your head and wiggle your ears. Now go oh, on. Here. Rod, get in those pajamas. Hurry up. Oh, I don't want to go to bed. It's too early. Do what I tell you. Get in them. Well, the ones with the back, those are still in the laundry. Goody, goody. Get in them. Hurry up. I don't see anything wrong, Chief. Neither do I. That's what worries me. I wouldn't fool around with Faraday if I were you. Don't argue. Get in bed. Maybe they're asleep. Then we'll wake them up and find out. Yeah, but if you wake them up, how do you know they're asleep? Oh, shut up. Hurry up, will you run? I am hurrying up. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Well, what's the matter? Haven't you got a home? Why don't you draw up a bed and lie down? This isn't exactly a social call, Blackie. Oh? Uh, oh, uh, would you mind having a cigar? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Take it to them. One to grow on. <laughs> All right, now you know why I'm here, Blackie. Why? Why did you phone me and suddenly hang up? I don't get you. Let's not start trying to fool each other so early in the evening. I answered the phone and I heard your voice. That's right. I was listening. You know, Matthews, your ear is gradually assuming the shape of a keyhole. Just to refresh your memory, Blackie, the clerk downstairs tells me there's been some excitement on this floor. Oh, yes, that you know I'd completely forgotten. It seems some of the tenants thought they heard a shot, so I naturally called you. Mm -hmm. And when I found out there was nothing wrong, I hung up. And went back to sleep, I suppose. In my little trundle bed, yes. Okay, Blackie. We'll be gone. Mm -hmm. Ow! Watch those flat feet of yours, will you? Sorry, Blackie, did I hurt you? Let's take a look here. Uh, that's, a, that's all right, thanks. So you've been in bed for some time and you just got up, huh? Yes, yes, I've been sleeping very peacefully until you came barging in. Those shoes are a little rough on your sheets, aren't they? Uh, well, I have to wear those, Inspector. You see, I walk in my sleep. Mm. Oh. Oh. I thought I heard voices. Come in, Rant. Uh-huh. Hello. Hello. Do you walk in your sleep? Who, me? Oh, never. Once I hit the hay, I'm gone. I... <laughs> you always sleep with those shoes on? Huh? Oh, yes, he has to wear those. You see, it saves him time in the uh, when uh, thing. And he... Oh, yes, it saves him time getting dressed in the morning. <laughs> Just so they're not running shoes. 
You save a lot of time getting dressed in the morning, too, Blackie. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> What's that? Um, uh, that's a seagull. We throw it a herring every Friday. Very funny. Get out of the way. Get the baby out the back way. What do I do? Take him over to Mamie's. Mamie's? That's my girl. What does she think? Don't argue. Go, go. All right, Blackie, where's the baby? Now, what would a baby be doing in a bachelor's apartment? That's what I want to know. Oh, get away from there. You don't fold a baby up like a shirt. <laughs> hey, Chief, come here quick. A body. Wait a minute, Blackie, get back there. Let's guess who it is. What is this, a guessing game, or are we investigating a murder? Oh, oh. young Peyton. Paroled from penitentiary yesterday and murdered in your apartment today. Don't, don't jump at conclusions, Inspector. It might happen anywhere. Yeah, but it didn't. It happened here. Get out of those pajamas. Now, look, I can explain. Save it till we get out of headquarters. We'll make it trap number 406. No, 407. Mm. You and Peyton's wife were running around together a few years ago, weren't you? I was very fond of her, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. Inspector Faraday, get me to the coroner's office. If this was for money, nobody could make me believe you'd ever pull a murder, Blackie. <laughs> I don't know. What am I offered? But this particular killing has a distinct aroma of what the crime magazines call romance and passion. Hello, Doc Murdoch. There's a case over here at Boston Blackie's apartment. Yeah, bring your basket. Now, look, this is silly. I can explain. All right, don't get up. Look, if I killed young Peyton, would I have called you on the phone and then hung up as soon as I got you? You might do just that. It might be your idea, the beginning of a beautiful alibi. <laughs> Same old Faraday. Hmm. <laughs> This bullet entered the right side, pierced the heart, lodged between the fourth and fifth ribs. A 38. Same caliber as this gun. Well, I guess we got this case sewed up, huh, Chief? We? Oui. What have you done? I'm here, ain't I? What'll you bet? All right, get your pictures and let's get out of here. I wouldn't trust Blackie alone in that room if there was a bear trap at every door. Ah, uh, don't worry, Chief. It's a six-story jump and he hasn't got a parachute. You better be sure he hasn't got an umbrella. What's that? Where's Blackie? What was that shot? Maybe it's kids shooting firecrackers. This time of year? Maybe it's a car backfiring. You couldn't get a car in that courtyard unless you built it there. Maybe it's not a car. You see anybody go out this way? No, sir. Well, keep your eyes open. Look around there. Gotta be somewhere in this apartment. Maybe we ought to send out a general alarm. Maybe you ought to shut up. Come on. I don't know. He must have made himself invisible to get out of that room without being seen. I don't believe in that stuff, Chief. It ain't been invented yet. Telephone. Sharp. Yeah? Listen, Blackie. I know you can't talk, but the kid's okay. Well, I'm up at you-know-where, but you-know-who ain't home. The janitor let me in. Oh, listen, Blackie. Can't you think of any other place? You know, I'm not very good at explaining things. Uh... What? Mm-hmm. Huh? I can't hear a word. Just say... Oh, 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 I forgot you can't talk. Well, listen, Blackie. Hurry up over, will you please? Just as soon as you can get rid of that blubberhead Faraday. The runt called me a blubberhead. He did? He can't prove it. Where is he? He's up at you know where, but you know who ain't there. I'll have to have a little time to figure that out. I right, skip it. But there was a baby. Yeah? Blackie lied to me. So long, Inspector. I hope you find Blackie. Don't worry, I can lay my hands on him anytime I want to. Oh, my hat. Doc, the last time you lost it, it was on the stretcher under the body. Remember? <laughs> That's right, it was. Remember? I left it in the closet. Hey, Doc, here's your hat. <laughs> it's a little bent. <laughs> Thank you. All right, get it out of the morgue.
Oh, it's cold in here. It'll be a lot hotter in a minute. <laughs> nice try, Blackie. Nice try. Next time, don't dine with the same boots on. All right, all right. Now, have you finished with the postmortems? Not until you've answered a few questions. Well, let's go. I'm much better playing dumb than I am playing dead. We'll see. What's the dope on this baby? I don't know. Yeah, then who is who's it that lives with whatchamacallit? I beg your pardon? Uh, you say it. Who is you-know-who who lives at you-know-where? <laughs> I'm no good at riddles, chum. No time for stalling, Blackie. A murder's been committed in your apartment. Well, that doesn't prove I did it. But the man who was murdered was married to the woman you were in love with, and that could be a very good reason for you to get rid of him. Oh, you're on the wrong track, Inspector. Young Peyton was shot by somebody outside the door. He got away so fast, I didn't even see him. <laughs> Blackie, you're losing your grip. That isn't as good a story as you usually cook up. Thanks. Now, listen, it's my business to get the facts in this case, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Say, what kept you? What have you been doing? What do you think I've been doing? Where'd you leave my kid? At Blackie's. I didn't have time At to... At Blackie's? Now, that's a dumb stunt. What'd you expect me to do? Faraday came in the front door and I went out the back. Blackie made me go. He didn't want me mixed up in the murder. Murder? Hey, Smiley, you didn't tell me anything about that. Who, who's murder? Shut up. So, uh, Blackie's still soft on you, huh? What's that got to do with it? Everything. That's what I was counting on when I set up this deal. Did he tell you what he expects to do with the baby? He said the runt would bring it to me. And how does he plan to do that with Faraday still there? How should I know? Why did I ever get into this? Over a hundred thousand bucks, Jerry. And this is no time to go soft. After all, he was my husband. He was no good and you know it. Besides, you wanted to get even with the old man for disinheriting you. Well, here's your chance. While Blackie's taking the rap, we palm off the kid, collect and get out of here. Say, wait a minute. If you turn over my kid to Peyton's old man as his grandson, how'll I get him back? Can't you figure that out later? Well, if he was your kid, you'd be worried too. You never worried about that brat in your life. All you want is some easy coin for letting us borrow him. Sure, I want the dough, but I got a father's feeling. Don't make me laugh. Get on the ball, Jerry. Go get that kid and bring him back here. And I don't care how you do it. Okay. There we are. That's a good little man. Sure, that's a good... Come here, honey. I'll fix you up. Oh. Well, look at you. Aren't you a nice big boy? <laughs> oh, gee, you're cute. <laughs> Say, how'd you like to hear a little music? Maybe I can find a lullaby on the radio, huh? Oh, or would you rather hear some swing? Hands up. Reach for the ceiling, I said. Drop that gun. <laughs> there was enough shooting during business hours. I gotta come home and find it. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. You're the cutest little fella I've ever seen. Say, I'll bet it's past your feeding time. I know. You gotta eat something. Well, sure, kids eat the same as human beings. Now, you wait right here. I'm going to go out and get you a shot of milk. Koppelheim is pale, dry lager. Dozens of bottles of beer, not a drop of milk. Fine mother that made me it make. Tough luck, pal. There isn't a drop of cow juice in the joint. Kopelheimer's, the pale lager that gives you ruddy cheeks, presents the city news on the hour. As you listen, the police are grilling Boston Blackie regarding the murder of John Payton, Jr. An accomplice known only as the Runt is being sought for questioning. The disappearance of a... Now, I'm going to go out and get you the milk just the same. Now, you just wait right here. Don't you go away now. 
Oh, I can't go out there. They're looking for me. <laughs> you just wait right here. Now, don't you say a word, honey. I'm going to get dressed, I'm going to go downstairs, mm. and I'm going to get you some milk, and we're going to have the yeah. best time, just you and I. We're going to have a wonderful time. You just wait and see. Mm. You just wait and see. Yes. Oh, you're so cute. How do I look? I don't blame you. Now, you wait right here. Let's get this over with. Whose baby are you hiding and how does it tie in with this murder? Well, I'd be very glad to tell you. Well, go on, go on. But you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> uh, Faraday speaking. Who's this? Who did you say this is? Mamie Kerwin. You know me. Swiss cheese on mine, a glass of buttermilk. <laughs> sure, the Queen of Murphy's Hamburger Palace in person. <laughs> Hi, Inspector. Listen, I found a strange baby camping in my apartment. What do I do with it? Who do I call? Well, why bother me with a thing like that? Send it to an orphan asylum or put an ad in the lost and found column. I'm a... Ba baby, did you say... Wait a minute. What's your address, Mamie? Yeah. All right, Mamie. Yeah, Mamie. Okay, Mamie. Fine, Mamie. Who is it? All right, Mamie. That's Mamie. Yes, all right, Mamie. Yes, Mamie. Goodbye, Mamie. Now I know who you know who is. Mamie, the Runt's girlfriend, isn't it? I know nothing of the Runt's love life. All right, Blackie, we'll take this up when I get back. Keep your eye on him. Don't let him out of your sight. But, Chief, I was going to the gym. It's the last night I have to practice for the police wrestling matches. Now, you heard what I said. If you'd exercise your brain a little more than your muscles, you'd get farther. That's right. So long, Faraday, and good luck. <laughs> A lot he cares whether I win or lose. Exercise your brain, he says. What brains? I should have said. No, I shouldn't have said that either. I know exactly how you feel. Tough luck, pal. Yeah, and if it wasn't for you, I'd be in the gym right now, getting into shape. Well, you still can. How? After that crack Faraday made about you, wouldn't you like to show him up? Boy, I sure would. I... What are you getting at? While he's fooling around with a poor little baby, I can get you the evidence that will solve this murder. No kidding? Uh-huh. How? Well, first, you'll have to let me out. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was a catch to it. If I let you go, I might as well give you my gun and my badge, too. Well, I'll take very good care of them. I'll bet you would. All right, Matthews, you're passing up your big chance. And besides, you're losing out on that wrestling practice. That's what gripes me. Yeah. Say, look, if you want wrestling practice, I'll show you some swell holds. I know every hold in the book, from toe hold to headlock. Oh, no, that's kid stuff. I mean some new stuff, you know, better than judo. Yeah? Sure. Well, maybe we could try a few. I, I won't hurt you. No, no, come on. Steady. It's a new one, huh? Yeah. You know, Matthews, you get prettier all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're a cinch. You're better than I thought, Matthews. 
Say, you know, I was just thinking, it might help me in the department if I did something smart. Yes, for a change, mm-hmm. Uh, can you get me that evidence you were talking about? Oh, sure. But come on, let's try another hold. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, pal. Take care of my customers. Oh, but you're so big and so strong, and my baby is so little and so hungry. Well, I can let you have one bottle. Thanks. Hey, are you crazy? Yeah, I'm crazy. Yeah. Why you? How are you? Runt, what in the... Oh, now, Mamie, I can explain everything. You see, I was going to go to a masquerade, and I saw a uniform, and I thought I'd dress up like a bottle of milk. Huh? I mean, uh, I mean a waitress. Well, anyway, I didn't go, and so here I am, and here you are. Uh, see what I mean? No, I don't. Madeline, where did you get this baby? Why, uh, where did I get it? I won it in a raffle, you lunkhead. Let me see the tickets. Wait a minute. I come home and find the baby, and you come in with a bottle of milk. What are you trying to slip over? Oh, nothing, honey, nothing. I, I brought the baby up here. Well, I brought it up here, so all right. So well, what's, what's wrong about that? What's wrong about it? You tell me. Is it yours? Of course not. When would I have time to have a baby? Then whose is it? What are you doing with it? Why did you bring it here? Well, now, look, honey, I can explain everything, but oh, please don't ask me now. Please don't. Oh, you'll open up your trap soon enough when the police get here. The police? Mamie, you didn't... Well, what do you think I was going to do? Inspector Faraday's on his way over right now. Faraday? Oh, Mamie, you don't know what you did. All right, then, give. What have I done? Shh. There he is now. Look, I can only tell you this much. There's been a murder committed, and Faraday's trying to pin the blame on Blackie. Murder? Did Blackie do it? Of course not, Blackie. He told me to bring the baby up here until he can clear us. That's all. Beat it. I'll handle Faraday. But if you lied to me, I'll... Oh, I know, honey. Okay, okay. Surprise. Come in. Where's the baby? Baby? What baby? Didn't you phone and tell me there was a strange baby up here? Oh, that baby. He's gone. Where? He couldn't wait. He was in a hurry. Had to catch a train, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's it. He had to catch a train. Mm. Oh, what's all this double talk, Inspector? You must be trying to kid me. Listen, you're not kidding me, Mimi. The runt came and got him. Didn't he? I believe you're serious. I am. Well, isn't that the darndest thing? I thought you were clowning at first. <laughs> oh, I know what happened. I'll bet one of the other girls phoned you as a gag on me. Why? Oh, uh, we have a waitress's club, like a sorority. And they always rib a new member when she's being initiated. Mm -hmm. So you're being initiated, huh? Is there... Uh... Does this little thing belong to your sorority? Oh, that. I just bought it to take to a baby shower they give him for a friend of mine. Naturally. And when you drink beer, do you always take milk for a chaser? It's very nourishing that way, Inspector. You ought to try it sometime. Now, look, Mamie, you're not putting anything over on me. You're covering up for the runt and blackie. Well, let me warn you. You're getting yourself mixed up into something that's going to cause you a lot of trouble. Is that a tip? Yes, that is a tip. Uh, leave the next one by your plate when I serve you lunch tomorrow. Mm. Taxi? Just a minute. There's a passenger getting out. I know, but uh, I'm in a hurry. Hey, what is this?
Blackie. Mother. <laughs> well, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Faraday's upstairs in Mamie's apartment. I know it. Well, hey, we're going to do something to help Mamie. Well, don't worry about Mamie. She knows her stuff. You know. Where to? Or oh, any place, driver. Just drive around. Here. Cute kid. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that outfit. Oh, you look so smooth. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You don't seem to get the idea. I'm in Dutch with my girl. First it's the baby, then it's Faraday. Why don't you tell him the whole story? I want to be sure that Jerry doesn't get snagged up in this mess first. I don't care about Jerry. I'm worried about Mamie and me. Here I am on a lamb, and I'm playing nursemaid to a kid. Well, now, if that's all the maternal affection you've got, we'll take the baby back to Jerry right now. She ought to be home by this time. <laughs> what are you looking back there for? It's a lifelong habit, and besides, we're being followed. Huh? Oh, driver, the first empty cab you come to, pull up, will you? Here, run, take off that cab. Huh? I'll tell you. Now get down. Be careful of the kid. Driver, pull over and stop. Get down, Dad. They're switching cabs. But I can still see their hats. Ah, that's the oldest gag in the world. Ain't we getting out? <laughs> that's what Matthews thinks. They want me to think they're still in there. And while I'm chasing them, they get away in the other cab. But I don't fall for it, see? All right, drive it. OK. They're crouched on the floor of the cab. Watch me get them. I'm imagine meeting you here. What are you doing here? I thought I told you to stay in the office and keep your eye on Blackie. That's just what I'm doing. My remote control, I suppose. No, don't you get it? No. I used your favorite stunt. I let Blackie think he escaped so I could follow him. Then where is he? Chief, this'll kill you. I bet. <laughs> right in that cab. Blackie, the runt, and the baby. The whole caboodle of them. All I gotta say is they better be in there. They are. Well, they'd be surprised. <laughs> All right, come on out, wise guys. You mallet head. Now, Chief, take it easy. I don't know what don't keeps don't me from where I put you. Out. I ought to... Wait a minute, driver. Yes? Good evening. I'm from the Child Welfare Bureau. I'm looking for Mrs. Payton, uh, Mrs. Geraldine Payton. Well, it's about time somebody made her take care of that baby. If I were you, I'd make her take it back to her sisters. Her sisters? Yes. That's where she says she kept it all the time. Oh, I see. Well, how long has she had the baby here? Just a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Well, your evidence is very important. Have you any idea where I could find Mrs. Payton at the moment? She went out several hours ago to visit a friend, a Mr. Boston Blackie on Park Avenue. And I'll bet a cookie he's no good either. I'll bet you a cake you're right. So she left a message where she was going, huh? Yes, because she was expecting someone else to call. Oh, I see. Who? Her husband. Did he show up? Mm, right after she left. Are you sure he was her husband? He said he was. Anyway, I gave him the address. Why, is there something wrong? No, no, everything's fine. Herbert, thank you very much. Hey, we're gonna take the kid inside? No, we're gonna hold on to it a while longer. <laughs> Say, Runt, if Jerry was running away from somebody, why would she leave a message where she went? How should I know? Did she? <laughs> yeah. I understand your feelings, Mrs. Payton, but we have a murder to solve, and I must ask you a few questions. That's why I've sent for you. I'll tell you everything I know. But what about my baby? We're doing everything possible. Why did you leave your baby at Blackie's apartment? Because I thought he'd be safe there. Just what was your relationship with Blackie while your husband was in prison? Well, we were seeing each other. How often? About twice a week. I was alone. Your husband's parole came as a surprise to you, didn't it? Yes. You see, he never said anything to me about it. How could he? The records show you never wrote him nor visited him in prison. I know. 
I, I was so busy making a living for myself and the baby. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to say that I helped Blackie kill him? Then he did kill your husband. <gasps> oh, I didn't mean to say that. All right, now maybe you'll tell me exactly how it did happen. Well, I was waiting for Blackie to come home. He was only there a short time when John showed up. He accused us of double-crossing him. What did Blackie say to that? Well, they quarreled. And then they started to fight. Blackie pulled out a gun, and before I knew it, they were wrestling for it. That was a shot, and... And then what happened? All I know is someone took me out of the apartment and called a cab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I called Blackie's apartment all night and this morning, but there was no answer. Why would Blackie want to hold on to your baby? I don't know, but I'm sure he's up to something. In that case, there's another interested party I think you should meet. Send Mr. Harcourt in. Mr. Harcourt? Who's he? Mr. Harcourt? This is Mrs. Payton. How do you do? I'm the attorney representing Mr. Cyrus Payton, your late husband's father. What does he want? Well, I'm sure that you as a parent can appreciate his feelings. Mr. Payton received word this morning uh, from an anonymous source that he has a grandchild by Mrs. Payton and his unfortunate son. You mean he didn't know that? Strangely enough, no. So as his attorney, it's my duty to see that he is not victimized. Tell him he needn't worry. Old man Payton has no claim on my son, and I don't want anything from him. Just a minute, Mrs. Payton. No use getting yourself upset. Before any action can be taken, we're going to have to find your baby. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. The baby is missing. Missing? Do you mean kidnapped? Well, shall we say temporarily misplaced. Uh, say, Chief, you know, I... Oh, uh, excuse me. Well, you're in. What is it? Well, Chief, remember last night I got the number off of the cab that Blackie and the run escaped in. If you hadn't, you'd be pounding a beat today. Yeah, and you know what I did? I found out where they were dropped off, I hope. That's right, but you'll never guess where. At Blackie's apartment. That's right. Come on, I'll have your baby back for you in half an hour. How does he do it? I'm gonna read a book sometime and get as smart as he is. Go to sleep, my baby, and close those beautiful eyes. Go to sleep, my baby, and close those beautiful eyes. Oh, what's the use? Hey, maybe we ought to sing some grand opera. It always put me to sleep. <laughs> This is silly. Why didn't you leave the baby at Jerry's when you were there the last time? Well, the whole thing sounds fishy, Mamie. Jerry told a landlady that she was keeping the kid at her sister's home. Well, what's wrong with that? I happen to know she hasn't got a sister. What? And I'm afraid our sweet little Jerry is trying to pull a fast one. Oh, she wouldn't do that to you. Well, then why didn't she come out and tell the truth about the murder? I don't know. Well, there's only one thing to do. Mamie will have to take the baby over to Jerry's apartment. Now you're talking. Hey! The address is 1706 East Drive. Now, tell her you found it at the railroad station. Tell her anything. Well, wait a minute. Isn't it enough you got me mixed up in a murder? Now you want me arrested as a kidnapper. Well, if you're arrested, Mamie, we'll come and visit you, and we'll send you flowers and candy. Never mind the flowers. If I get pinched, you'll need them yourself. <laughs> hey, Mamie, ain't that cute? And doesn't that give you some ideas? Yes, it does. That you're a crazy galoot, and I'm not going to get you out of any more jams. Does that give you any ideas? Yeah. Out the back way, hurry. You're not kidding, brother. Who's there? It's me, Jerry. Don't you think that we ought to keep out of sight? Well, come in, come in. I, I hope the room is large enough. All right, Blackie, let's make it short and sweet. Quite a convoy you brought with you. I'm sorry, Blackie, but I've come for my baby. Where is he? Come on, cut out the stalling. We know the whole story. Take a look around, Matthews. You miss your baby very much, Jerry? What do you mean by that? Kid ain't here, Chief. Hey, isn't here? What have you done with him? You're flirting with dynamite, Blackie. No, you don't. Hello? Hello, Blackie. Yeah, hello, Rand. Don't worry about a thing. Yeah, you know who took... You know what to you know where. Listen, Runt, you can tell you know who that I know what's what, and I'll soon find out where. Hey, oh, go away. Hey, mister, please. That's what I get all the time. But damn it, explain the jam. 
just got nothing else to do but look after their pooches. Cody. Uh-oh. Blackie, what kind of a stunt are you trying to pull with this baby? I can't tell you yet. I think you'd better. I guess you know Mrs. Payton has already implicated you in the murder of her husband. I beg your pardon. What did you say? You heard what I said. I couldn't help it, Blackie. I had to tell the truth. The truth, huh? Just what did you tell the inspector? You better answer me. <laughs> Young man, you don't realize the seriousness of this. If there's any fraud, Mr. Payton's prepared to take drastic action. And may I ask who you are, sir? My name's Harcourt. I'm attorney for Mr. Payton Sr. Oh. Well, Jerry told me old man Payton didn't know there was a baby. How did he find out so suddenly? He received this note today. I wonder if you know your grandson is being badly neglected by Mrs. Geraldine Payton. That's a lie. I take very good care of him. Go on, Mr. Harkett. Something should be done about it. Yeah, I see that, please. I'm not privileged to let it out of my possession. Well, who wrote the note? It's merely signed a friend. A friend? Whoever wrote that note's even afraid to sign a name. Doesn't it strike you as strange, Inspector, that the baby receives all this publicity the same day young Peyton was murdered? You can bet it's strange. That's why you're going down to headquarters. Come on, Blackie. Well, I'll take your Come on. on. Me. Now, I'll go quietly. Good work, Doc. Huh? Let's make a run for it. Man, will you stop? Get this beast off! Oh, get the dog out of here! Oh, Chief! Look at them. Don't they play cute? You, you Blackie, come on! Stupid ass! <laughs> I better phone the Humane Society and tell them what's going on here. <laughs> Get him away from her. Call her back. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Hart. Hold on, you he looks good. <laughs> Take it easy, Faraday. I'll meet you at the dog pound. Blackie! Come back here if you know what's good for you! Help! Please! Climb off! Keep! You scared me. I scared you. What are you doing climbing in windows? Oh, Mamie, this ain't just any old window. That's just what I mean. Yesterday I was happy leading a quiet life. Now look at me, shaking like a bowl of jelly. Oh, but honey, I... Don't you honey me. You ought to have seen the tough time I had given that baby back. Hey. Ah! Oh, Blackie, am I glad to see you. Mamie here... Mamie says shut up, and Mamie says beat it. Oh, a lover's quarrel, huh? And in the dark, too. Well, you'll have to do that in your spare time. I've got more important matters to take up. And I got plenty to tell you. I just checked with the Bureau of Vital Statistics. You did? There's no birth record of a child named Peyton in the last three years. Then that kid is a ringer. Right. And for that, I had to break my neck and nearly get arrested as a kidnapper. It was all an act. Jerry's working with somebody, and they're trying to pull a fast shakedown on old man Peyton. Now, they needed some fall guys to take care of young Peyton, so we were elected to take the rap. Well, why don't we go to Paddy and spill the brakes? You think he's going to believe us? Oh, we've got to clear ourselves, Mamie, or go to jail. Well, nobody's going to put me in the pokey. I'm going to Faraday and talk my head off. I don't blame you, Mamie. I understand exactly how you feel. Of course, I was hoping you'd help us out, but... I wouldn't want to come between you and Mamie, Rund. You're too good a pal. Well, Blackie, I never let you down before. Oh, skip it. I'll handle it somehow, alone. Uh, no, but you're the best friend I ever had. We pulled through some mighty tough jams together, haven't we, Rund? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. But don't worry. I'll handle this alone, somehow. I'll take the rap myself. I'm not gonna desert you, Blackie. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick like I never stuck before. No. Yes. No. Yes. Will you two stop this before I start born? Oh, Mamie, you're terrific. I knew you wouldn't let us down. Wait a minute, I didn't Have say... Have you ever been a secretary? Why? Do you want me to sit on your lap? <laughs> Maybe later. Right now, I want you to phone Jerry and say you're Peyton's secretary. Peyton's secretary? That's right. I won't do it. That's forgery. Oh, Mamie. Oh, now, look, Blackie, we've got 150 years in jail waiting for us and the chair at the end of that. Then what have we got to lose? I'll dial the number for you. Now, when you get Jerry, you say that Cyrus W. Peyton wants to speak with us. Is that clear? Here we go again. Hello? Hello? It's this way. Who? Yes, this is Mrs. Payton. My father-in-law. Yes, Mr. Payton. 
I just arrived in town and heard about the baby. Oh, you got it back. Fine, fine. Well, now just a moment, young lady. There's no need of losing your temper. After all, I'm the one who really should be angry, you know. Well, very well, I'll be brief. I think we should have a little talk and possibly we can reach some sort of settlement. Yes. Good, good. I'll be there within the hour. Goodbye. Yes, sir, the whole idea is very clear. This is a shakedown for Big Doe, and Blackie's in it with that Jerry girl. Mm, I think we got something there, Chief. If we shadow Mamie, I think we'll find the rotten Blackie. Leave them alone and stop saying we. I've got a better idea. Mm, I'm all ears. With nothing between them. Get Peyton Sr. on the phone. I'm going to use him for bait. I wonder what's keeping old man Peyton. It's Blackie that worries me. He might show up at the wrong time. You didn't think he'd take that frame of lying down. Ah, uh, pipe down. Remember what you're going to say to him? I should. You've told me 20 times. Don't pull that phony birth certificate unless he asks for it. Don't you think I know anything? Oh, sure, sure. But uh, don't hold out too long. If Peyton offers to pay you off, give in at the right time. All you've got to do is to keep out of sight. Uh, good evening. Is the manager in? I'm the landlady. No vacancies, if that's what you're after. Oh, 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 goodness me, no. I'm from the Child Welfare Bureau. Oh, another man from your office was here last night. Yes, yes. It's about the Peyton baby. And thanks to your excellent suggestions, we've decided to take action. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear it. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. This is Miss Trey, one of our best field operatives. I would have sworn you were the girl who left that baby with me a few minutes ago. You look just like her. Oh, uh, that was my sister. We're friends. Uh, t twins. Oh, you're much prettier than she is. Yes, and she's much smarter, too. Her sister's a waitress. She's an executive. <laughs> uh, would you mind if she took over the switchboard while I'm upstairs? You see, in our investigations, we want to trace all Miss Peyton's calls, in and out. <laughs> you know, secret agent stuff. Oh, my goodness, this is thrilling. No, not a word to anyone. I won't breathe it to a soul. Thank you. Keep your eyes peeled for Faraday. I've been doing it for six years. Don't let any outside calls go through to Jerry's apartment. No calls, check. And listen, Lame Brain, if you ever make any more cracks about waitresses, I'll serve you a double order of knuckles. Oh, Mamie, I was just trying to pay you a compliment, that's all. Quiet. All right, get Jerry on the phone. Say, so how does this gimmick work? You must have been the telephone operator one time or other. No one else could get so mixed up. No, sure. There we are. Keep your eyes open, Ren. Yes? It's Peyton. Have him come right up, please. Come on, we'll wait in the bedroom. I won't. I can't go through with it. What do you mean? Well, it's like I told you. How do I know I'll get the kid back? Well, it's a fine time to come up with that. I should have gotten a different kid in the first place. Get in there. Oh, I can't. The kid's all I've got, and I'm all he's got. What is this, a play for more dough? No, no, honest, Smiley. I'll get out of here. I won't squawk. Look, Smiley, I... Oh, Smiley, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute, Smiley. Don't! You fool! Now what are we gonna do? Shut up and give me a hand. Just a minute! Pull yourself together. Go get the kid. Mrs. Peyton? Yes. Won't you sit down? Yeah, yes, of course. Charming little place you have here. Yeah. Uh, won't you, wouldn't you rather sit over there? No, 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 this is quite all right, thank you. 
So this is my grandchild, huh? Well, he's quite a little man. <laughs> but why shouldn't he be? He's a Peyton. Good, sturdy stock. Of course, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, no, 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 my dear, I didn't mean that. Uh, Geraldine. Uh, may I call you Geraldine? If you wish. It seems a pity it's taken so long for us to meet. You didn't want to meet me. You didn't think I was good enough for your son. But now... Now I'm alone, and I'm an old man, with no one to brighten up the few remaining years, except my son's child. Won't you consider letting me have him? Not a chance. He's all I have in the world, too. Are you being quite fair to the child? I mean, I can give him every opportunity. A fine upbringing, a splendid education. But there's one thing you can't give him, and that's a mother's love. Well, it's a mother's first duty to be unselfish where the interest of her child is concerned. Now, if you'll be reasonable, I, I'll be generous with you. Yes, I have a certified check here for $10,000. $10,000? Uh, as a token gift only. There'll be more. Oh, yes, indeed. Much more. Well, I, I hope you won't misunderstand me. Oh, of course not, dear girl. Of course not. You're doing the right thing. But you mustn't feel that you're going to lose the baby. No, indeed. You may visit him whenever you please. May I? Why, of course. Yeah. May I hold him? Oh. <laughs> well, you're coming home with Grandpa. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh, uh, before I give you the check, there are one or two little formalities. You, uh, you have the child's birth certificate, of course. I'll get it. Geraldine, wasn't the baby vaccinated? Why, uh, no. I've been so busy looking for a job, trying to make a living. I, I was going to have it done next week. Well, that's very important, you know. I know. I, I should have attended to it. Uh, here's the birth certificate. Thank you. Mrs. Peyton, are you quite sure you're telling me the truth? What do you mean? Well, you said the baby wasn't vaccinated. Uh, what do you call this? Take a look. Come closer. It's... I forgot. I wasn't thinking. I, uh, I had it done when he was a year old. Mm, two months ago, and you didn't remember, eh? And here's another strange thing. The date and the signature are in the same handwriting as the note I received, saying you were neglecting the child. Mrs. Peyton, this child is not yours. That's a lie. You're just trying to frighten me into giving up my baby without paying anything. Well, we'll let the police determine that. And if I discover that you're trying to pass off somebody else's baby on me, I'll, I'll have you thrown in jail. You're crazy. You don't know what you're saying. Get out of here. Smiley! Put it back, Peyton. I said put it back. <coughs> so I was right. You did have an accomplice. Come on, hurry up with that check, or I'll knock you off like... Well, why don't you finish it? The way you killed my boy. I didn't say that. Come on, hurry up with that check. Uh-oh. Where are you going, Ron? I was just going to warn Blackie, huh? Oh, no, I was going to pick a small... Hold it, Mamie. Sorry, sir. No vacancies. We're fresh out and full up. Try the job next door. What are you doing here? Well, she just took a job as a relief operator. Get up from that switchboard. All right, Mr. Payton. Announce yourself. Oh, oh, that's a jolly good idea, Inspector. Uh, pip, pip. Pretty good, huh, Chief? We're cooked. Hello. Yes? Someone who says he's Peyton. Peyton? And he's with Faraday. Well, then who's this guy? Tell him you don't feel well. You're calling back. Wait a minute, Jerry. Blackie! That's right. Boston Blackie, huh? You thought you could give us the fast shuffle. Well, what did you think after the double cross you gave me? Now, we can still make plenty out of this. That's why I'm cutting myself in. But you got to work fast. You haven't much time. And by the way, who's the jet behind the divan? You'll find out. Put the kid in the bedroom. 
Pack your things. I want to be alone with this clock for just one minute. Look, that hand's moving. Once in my life, I'm glad to see you, Faraday, and you're just in time. Give me that gun, Blackie. Sure. He broke in here and tried to hold us up. He pretended he was Peyton, so he could take my child and blackmail my father-in-law. Just the other way around, Inspector. These are the people you want. How about that? All I know is I heard this young lady scream. I ran in, he knocked me down and threatened to shoot me. You had this gun in your hand when I came in, Blackie? You amaze me, Faraday. Why don't you ask them who killed the man back of the divan? Blackie did, the way he killed John. Are you going to believe that? Listen to me, would you please? I... Get me to the coroner's office. Where's the baby? In the bedroom. Take him downstairs and put him in my car. Your father-in-law's waiting down there. I'll want you both to testify. Fine. I've nothing to hold back. Inspector, listen. Save it. Faraday speaking, doctor. Better get over to Geraldine Payton's apartment right away. 1706 East Drive. Yeah, and bring a basket. Yep, like he did it again. Inspector, hold them, please. Oh, you dumb flat foot. I go to all the trouble of catching them for you, and then you let them get away. They killed young Peyton. Why did you disguise yourself as Peyton? Why did you put the run outside the door as a lookout? Why did you plant Mamie at the switchboard? You think I'm a fool, Blackie? That's putting it mildly. Besides, you and idiot's a genius. Come on, come on. Now, Black Mariah's waiting. All right, you don't I'll have take to you someplace you can cool off. I'll have to push you. Mr. Peyton, meet the famous, or should I say, notorious Boston Blackie. Hello, Matthews. Oh, gee. How'd you know it was me? I'd recognize those big feet of yours anywhere. They match your flat head. Oh, well, that explains it. I... Say, what do you mean? Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> well, I take it back, Inspector. You're all right. And he ain't no blubberhead either. For a cop, he's kind of cute. <laughs> Hey. We both had the same idea about that pair, Blackie. And I heard enough over the phone at the switchboard. Let me ask you something, Inspector. How did you find out the baby wasn't Jerry's? Oh, that, that, that was hard. It was. I had to go all the way to the Board of Health and ask him. Oh, well, that's what I did. I know, I saw you coming out. <laughs> well, then why did you put me through the ringer? I just wanted to prove to you that I was right, that women always get you into trouble. Oh, now, that's not true. Oh, that... Josie! Well, I certainly am glad to see you. Why, I... Now, what's the matter? Don't you remember me? Why, you old wolf. What? <laughs> what would I mean? Oh, what's this? Come on, Cassidy, bring that car off. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Blackie, I'm going to take him home. Well, that's swell. When he grows up to be big and strong, maybe he'll be a smart cop like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>